Okay. Um, good morning. Good morning. We thank the Lord for this opportunity. He's been with us now for about seven days. And uh, we're beginning a new week. To hear from the instruction from the Lord and to be ready to work for the Lord. I would like us to pray so that we can begin. Our most gracious Father, what in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given unto us. Your grace is sufficient for us, and we thank you because through the blood of your dear Son, we are able to come before you to do that uh, which you want us to do, and also to hear you instruct us in the path of righteousness. We pray that you may qualify us and give us your Holy Spirit to lead us in this journey. We ask, trusting and believing through the mighty name of your dear Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, uh, we've been looking on the divine plan of how we're supposed to carry out the angel's message or the three angel messages. Because God is calling us to do a specific, definite work that is going to lighten the whole world with the glory so that we can proclaim the third angel's message with power. We've been learning a lot about the institutional work. We've studied on the hygienic restaurant work. We've studied on sanitarium work. Yes. And uh, today I want us to study sanitarium work in connection with garden missionary work. Because this is a line of work that needs to be understood. We want to make sure that we succeed in the work that God has for us. It is a work that is not to be done in proxy, but everyone must put personal effort, individual effort in reaching out to the people. And many people have gone outside there working without knowledge. Zeal without knowledge is very dangerous. God is gathering us here for these two weeks to make sure that we understand um, deeply what it means to have the religious messages and know our duties and responsibility in finishing the work. Yes, uh, last week we studied on the objectives and the purpose of the sanitarium. What is the main objective and purpose of establishing our sanitarium? To those who are in class last week, who can remember? Yes, right. Well. Prepare a people to stand true to God during the uh, the time of investigative judgment. That is the purpose, that is the objective. And in our sanitariums, truth must be, it must be the center of truth where truth is presented to those who come to be treated. It is a place for educating people health principles. It is a place for taking care of the sick. It is a place for teaching people how to live in their families to be responsible men and women in the society. It is a place to show charity to the people, the surrounding community. Well, so we also began looking at the workers that are connected with our sanitarium. A physician, a nurse, who else is connected to the sanitarium? 
a garden missionary, a patron, a matron, who else? A Bible worker, a gospel minister is also connected to the sanitarium. A Christian cook connected to a sanitarium. Who else is connected? Yes, garden missionary has been mentioned. Thank you. Um, we have printing uh, uh, those those who are in charge of publication, health publication of health publicators. They are also connected with the sanitarium because we have a publishing house in the sanitarium. Articles are to be distributed. We also have uh, in the sanitarium, we have the hygienic dressmakers. Those who make hygienic dress are also connected with the sanitarium. And now what we need to know is exactly what each and every worker is going to do. You know, we are lagging behind because most of us have not known our duties or we have only known one duty to carry out. And so we neglect others or we are ignorant of them. So God is calling us to be very, very particular in uh, understanding uh, what we are supposed to do. Now, the topic is, I, uh, is sanitarium in connection with garden missionary work. But uh, before I do that, uh, before I, I dig deep into that, I want us to, uh, to read some stuff here on the duties of those connected with the hygienic restaurant. I want uh, to look at the physician. The physician, I'll just be mentioning the work so that you know if God calls you to be a physician in your home, in the sanitarium or hygienic restaurant, you know exactly what you're doing. Are we together? Yeah, because our work is of a definite objective and a definite mission to make people stand true to God during the investigative judgment. Well, so uh, uh, we have the physician, and then I'll end with the garden missionary worker in the sanitarium. Uh, this physician, his work is to win souls to Christ. Your work is to win souls to who? Christ. Counters are the opportunities that a physician has to winning source to God for cheering the discouraged and relieving the despair that comes to the soul when the body is tortured with pain. Your main work, every patient or any person you meet, your main work is to bring them into or prescribing Jesus Christ for them. They must know that you are not the one providing healing, but it is God through his son who gives healing to us. The next function or responsibility of a physician is to work, uh, is to encourage the sin sick soul. Your work is to encourage the sin sick soul. Ministry of Healing, page 120, paragraph 2. You have to encourage people. Many people will be opening their minds to you. They will tell you, I began becoming sick on such and such after such an experience, or some are becoming sick because of, uh, of hypertension or anxiety or de depression or family matters. You have to be in a position to encourage them, to give them hope in the word of, of, of God. So you must be someone who is full of the word of God. 
a physician they want if i if i uh, if we go to the new testament during the apostolic time uh, like those apostles or those deacons that were full of the power of the holy spirit the medical missionary worker who is calling the line of of the uh, christian cook or guided missionary or physician or nurse whichever line that god has called you you must not be void of knowing the truth of god and explaining it intelligently and understanding it to people how we together yeah that is our work because the people we are meeting are those who are ignorant of the word of god and in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 the world my people are dying because of lack of what of knowledge the knowledge of god has not been revealed to the world and so your work is to encourage the sin sick soul uh, another work is winning the confidence of the sick by your character winning the confidence of the sick by your character that is p h 066 page 39 your character you know when someone comes to a sanitarium do you know the first thing that they read the first book they read the first person they will meet how you welcome them how you talk to them how you relate you relate with other workers how other workers relate with one another it tells you whether this is a place that is full of the power of god or it is a place where people are hypocrites you need to practice to have a refined character you need not to be someone who is jesting and playing around with people if there are ladies in that sanitary mighty restaurant you want to jestle and jostle and joke around you need to be someone who has a uh, reserve how we to get a man who is chaste or a woman who is chaste do you know what it means to be chaste yes you need to be someone who has reservation you know this for this is where i'm supposed to read in in terms of deportment you should not be a man who just play around and and always laugh with men and women your character will determine the success or the treatment you are going to give the patient will see when he says to you he knows that this person is a man of god is a woman of god yes so another thing is you must be someone who is able to be a confidant to the sick confident to the sick that is ph 6640.1 you must be able to keep secrets you must be someone who keeps secrets what your patient has told you what the client has told you is between you and her or you and him he doesn't need to listen or hear that story again somewhere unless it gives you permission that this you can share this can be a testimony to other people until that opportunity is given not to bring uh, uh, defaming the patient or exposing their weak characters invite the presence of the lord in the sick room. this is the function or the work of the physician if you have rooms where people are you can go and pray with them the first thing in the morning or you can have a place where they come for devotion to feed them with the word of god and that is why in a sanitarium a nurse or a physician whichever patient you are handling you must have time with them to share the word of god with them are we together morning devotion if they wake up 
and maybe lunchtime or at noon time and then in the evening continually feeding them or encouraging them you can have a verse or a book that you are going to if it is john or it is it may be psalms or a book of isaiah or any other book that brings encouragement that actually make them to understand more about god you must have a plan are we together devotional plan just like in the house there is a devotional plan that is headed by the husband in the home and so in the sanitarium the physician must make sure that the objective of impressing the hearts of the sick people with the word of god is met now another thing is uh another work is to ensure that there is no controversy in the sick room ministry of healing 120.1 uh, make sure that there is you don't meet a patient the first time and you begin telling him this is what we need to do. this is the suburb or oh, this is prophecy or oh, this is what no make sure that those subjects will fall in their place in their right time but they're not things to argue about you must actually know the sanity of your patient there are some time that the difficult topics need not to be discussed with a sick person someone is having headache and you are cracking 2300 days you say that 49 is cut from what and we are want to trace it from uh darius the first and then we got a taxesus, and then we have a taxesus longimanus in 457. The sick person is becoming more sick. <laughs> you need to know the sanity of the patient or the person you are handling. You need to take them step by step. Be patient with them. Uh, sometimes they will not Actually, some of them may, be, may not be Sabbath keepers, Sabbath keepers at the end of their uh, healing. You know that? Mm. Yeah, but what they have seen there is a preaching, a platform that has preached to them. They will come to truth in the time that God will allow. Your work is to direct patients to the promises of God, Minister of Healing 121.2 direct the patient to the direct the patients to the promises of god can you direct the patient to the promises of god if you yourself don't know them never you will never so if you must master the promises of god how many promises of god do we have in the bible hmm? There are very many. Some of you just have a track that carries those promises of God, of health, and of protection of God, and of peace of God, and of life that Christ gives. And you read them together. You can even make a track having them, and you give them to your patient to read if they know how to read. Are you seeing how great this work is? Yeah, we must know we should not just be there but it is time to give a concussion you bring it it is time to bring the juices you bring it it is time to no 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 no. you must have a time that we want now to share the word of god at the end of the day you want to analyze the success that you have received during the day in the morning the patient tells you I woke up very tired. I was feeling pain on the right side of my chest, but I thank God that now I can breathe freely. Now I feel very, uh, I feel very, uh, uh, very relaxed and toned down. And now you hold the hand of the patient, you kneel down and you do what? You pray to confirm the promises of God, Father, that person will sleep that day very, very relaxed and very well. 
this is our work. Every day I tell you, if we are working in this sanitarium, so we, we find ourselves not uh, able to fight some diseases or some characters because we have not learned to mingle with the people. If you're working in this institution, how much time do you think of becoming angry with another person? How much time do you think about thinking about uh, maybe uh, another girlfriend or a boyfriend outside there? None, none of the time. Or becoming very jealous of another person because you are always connected with them. Have you ever had a sick person who is crying at night? Do you sleep? Do you sleep? What do you do? You, 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 your head will always be down. What are you doing? You're praying to God. I tell you this, there's nothing that humbles you if you have a sick person. I had one uh, uh, a sick, uh, sick person. Uh, it was the first time we went there to treat her with another person. Uh, a woman physician and so they slept the woman that lady slept with that woman i was taken to another house but my ears was always up. you could hear that woman crying literally that time you don't sleep you don't sleep even if it coughs just one <coughs> your ears are you don't just sleep throughout <laughs> then uh, if you have this, 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 these are agencies that God has given us that we can overcome sin. Why do people find it hard and say and complain that, oh, we cannot overcome sin and we cannot be perfected? Because we have not engaged in the final work that prepares people to stand true to God during the time of investigative judgment. Are we together? Yeah, so your main work is to direct the patient to the promises of God. Another work is educate on health principles. Your work is to educate on health principles. Educate on health principles. And that one we get in the book, SPTB 15, page 15.5. SPTB series, uh, SPTB, SPTB 15. Uh, 15.5. The work is to educate on health principles, educate on fresh air, educate on regular exercise, and do them with your patient. You are not just educating and sit. In the morning, when you wake up in the morning, you pray and you, you do your devotion and then say, we are going to do deep breathing. You go and do the deep breathing. We are going to go for a walk. You are going with your, with your patient. That's why a sanitary is a place you make many, many friends. Are we together? And by the way, those who are working in the sanitarium, they can never lack meals. You can never be broke. Let me tell you. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not promoting prosperity, but I tell you, if you have shared, this patient has been there for three months, you've been sharing the word of God. I told, oh, my friend, I need something here have a bladder to begin our work. That person, his heart will just be, oh, I'll give you that if he said it. You, may, you, you are connecting with people and they will help you always. It is, that is why the rapport that we create with these people that come to the sanitarium makes us or isn't our work in having means also to open other institution. The rapport you create, it will create a platform for you to get means easily to also do what? Establish other uh, institution anywhere, uh, everywhere. And also another thing that we know that the lady physicians and men, male physicians are to be there in the sanitarium. The male physicians are to do what? minister or handle the, the men and the female physicians are specifically and definitely to handle the what the female cases yeah we are lacking one line of medical missionary 
uh, was so in Kenya. I'm praying diligently. I pray God will he answer that sometimes shortly. Um, female physician who can educate women on their problems, specifically on women problems. They are able to organize for meetings. You know, the churches that we have, they should a month or a year should not end before women have their program where they are taught prenatal and postnatal and uh, uh, and how to take care of pregnant, uh, pregnant or expectant women, how they need to take their, take care of their children from age zero to two years. And the women, elderly women, should also have time with the youth, teaching them from the word of God how they are supposed to keep their family. That is part of medical missionary work that is neglected. Having a women or men uh, or elderly, like those grandfathers or grandmothers, today we feel that they don't have their position in the church but their position is described in Titus chapter two, verses one to five. Their work is to make sure that these young ladies or young women in their marriages are taught rightly on what they're supposed to be. Their responsibility in that family, in the church and to the community, that is part of medical missionary work. Yeah, so, uh, that one we need to understand very, very well. Now let's look at a, a, a nurse. What is the purpose of a nurse? Now a nurse is someone who is not gifted uh, with a lot of knowledge in diagnosing a disease or giving definite treatment programs, but receives his or her, uh, uh, I can say an instruction from a physician. Yeah, so is helping in the hospital. We have doctors and nurses. The doctor comes and inspects and see this is what you are supposed to do. We, pres we, we prescribe this. The nurse runs to the uh, pharmacy around and does what? Give, bring those doses and make sure that the patient does what? Takes them. So in a sanitarium, we have a physician who overlooks, oversees prescribes a diagnosis, and then the nurse helps to make sure that those uh, protocol treatments are followed. Everything is done. So one of your work is, number one, um, your work is to preach the word to the sick. Preach the word to the sick. Medical ministry, page 240. Preach the word to the sick. A nurse is to preach the word of the sick. That is why they qualify to be paid with the tax and offerings or tax. Because they, if they are doing this work faithfully and they people are converted at the end of the uh, at the end of the uh, of, of their program there. But then we are told that physicians can also baptize, you know that. Yeah, that is why in a sanitarium, there must be connected with the sanitarium, the gospel means, or the Bible work, or the Christian physician, if he qualifies, he can be able to baptize these people at the end of the time that they have made the decision for Jesus Christ. This is a busy place, a beehive of saving, of saving souls. Yes, and if it is in your home, you educate people, you can have a treatment room, you receive patient, but then you call a gospel minister who can uh, do what? Uh, after that person. He may be coming from Ethiopia, he's come here for treatment, and he say at the end of it, if he did not receive Christ, he said, now I have received Christ, I'm willing to be baptized. You don't tell him, you just go you leave. there and there. Now you call a what? A gospel minister. Or you, if you are ordained for that work, you do what? You baptize that person. That time, all the physicians and the nurses and the helpers, 
all the workers in that place join together and they pray and the person is baptized and the work of God continues. A sanitarium or even a hygienic restaurant prepares people who are going to make the vision for Jesus Christ. Your work is to visit the sick. Have you are Herald, July 5, 1906, paragraph 24. Visiting the sick. Home visitations. Review on Herald, July 5th, 1906, paragraph 24. Review on Herald, July 5th, 1906, paragraph 24. The sick need to be visited and uh, they need to be called. If, if, if they are far from you, you've been having someone who is sick, what you can do, you take their contact, try to call them. How are you doing? Since you left this place, how have you been? Well, I'm doing well, I thank the Lord, I'm doing ministry where, uh, uh, where in my place or in my home. There is the work of a nurse. You visit the sick, doing the to door visitation. Just say, today we've come here to visit you and we just want to, uh, to teach you on how to live healthy. You have a garden, we can show you how to farm. You. Uh, we can help you out to cook well, and you demonstrate that to them. And we can do simple treatments like foot baths and, and other, other related simple uh, uh, treatment skills, massage. And then that day, at the end of it, we found the law that we visited many homes. We visited, we visited three homes on which the three of them, one of them, we found maybe a sick child. We did for the child this and this and that. And uh, we prayed with our family and they thank us and this is the offering that they gave us. By the way, if they give you offering, uh, uh, if the Lord impresses you to take, no problem. If the Lord impresses you, you know that some people are so poor, you, you, you get a, should I take, should I not take? Now you must have wisdom. Like to me, the person is very poor. You know, some people are giving out of, uh, their heart is impressing them to give. I will take it, but I may return it on the right, on the, right, the other side, a very wise way that they, they have not known. But they, when they enjoy, they feel very happy that, at least we have done what? Yeah. And you see a way, a need that was there that you need to be fixed immediately. You don't just be a minister, you just take it when you forget forever. We are not working like the Pentecostals or those who just want bring and you shall be blessed. Bring and you shall be blessed. We need to make sure these people are grounded in truth. They are grounded in the character of Jesus Christ. Finding homes for the orphans and work for the unemployed. That is Review and Herald, July 5th, 1906, paragraph 24. The work of a nurse <laughs> is to find homes for the orphans and work for the unemployed. Now, how many people have ever thought that uh, our work is to help the unemployed? And it's because we ourselves, we are not employed. <laughs> because, uh, or we've neglected the work. That, good. that is Review and Herald, uh, July 5th, 1906, paragraph 24. Finding homes. The first one was 15. Yeah, the first one was July 5th. 5th, 5th. Review and Herald, July 5th, 1906, paragraph 24. The next one is Review and Herald, July 5th, 1906, paragraph 24, the same, They're just the same. But finding homes, and uh, uh, this is why we need to have homes. And those sanitariums are like homes for the aged or the, for the orphans. Now, they are coming there to be taught skills. You are not just coming and piling them there not training them on any other line. You are calling them, training them, training them on what they are supposed to do. 
you go, if you get a street child, you bring him to this orphan home or this sanitarium, you try to teach him or her on some skills they can do. If it is cookery, if it is garden missionary work or carpentry or masonry, so that at the end of it, they can now go out. You can, if the sanitarium has means, you can go get him something to do outside of buying him a land and make sure that he uses that to also help others. This is how we extend the work of God. And this is the divine plan of God. Not just giving them money, giving them clothes, ear in, ear out. They have to be educated. That's why in most orphanages today, this principle is not found. Children become more worse. And you know, orphans sometimes may become so worse. Because there are people that think that, oh, my mother is dead, my father is dead. I'm being afflicted. Yes, I'm being afflicted because my mother, and they become so emotional. We don't want to train them that. We want to teach them by the grace of God to learn to be very responsible, to learn that God takes care of them and that God who takes care of them also want them to be responsible. We don't have responsible youth today in the society. And this is a lack and a loophole that need to be filled by medical missionaries. So you have to establish homes. You will not wait for a body to come together to establish home. The home that God has blessed you with ought to begin the work. Are we together? Yes, this is where the work begins. Another work of the, of the, uh, of the nurse is to nurse the sick. Review and Herald, July 5th, 1906, paragraph 24. The same. Um, and also teaching the truth from house to house on health principles. The same book, Review and Herald, July 5th, 1906, paragraph 24. Teaching truth and the principles of health. Also, Ministry of Healing, 148, paragraph 2. You have to do the work of teaching the truth. Distribution of health publications. The same book, Review on Herald, July 5th, 1906, paragraph 24. Distribution of health publications. That's why we need to have a publishing house. Come up again. Excuse? Minister of Healing. 148 paragraph two. The work is, uh, is to teach the truth from house to house on health principles and as well as Bible truth and give them publications. So they should be short publications. If they're interested in, uh, if they're very interested, you can give them books like Step to Christ, Ministry of Healing, Christ Object Lessons. Uh, give them, if they don't have a Bible, you should give them the Bible and continue, be connected with them every day, speaking to them, following out what or how they are doing. Uh, you are, work also is to be a health counselor, health counselor, SPTB 0621.3, health counselor. You must know how to counsel people in health. And uh, SPTB, SPTB 06, 21.3. Now, in the health counseling, um, I know we, are, we'll be talk, we, are, we will be talking about uh, assessment of, uh, of how someone is sick. SPTB 06, 21.3. SPTB 06, 21.3. Uh, I'll teach us here what really, what questions are you supposed to ask a sick person? How do you know the body x-ray? What does the body tell you? That even from viewing the person and talking with the person and trying to examine the person, you already know what you're going to, what medication you're going to give. You're going to see someone who you just need to speak the word of God to him or you will take him through a regimen to become sick. 
am I too fast? Am I too fast? You just be writing. Well, I'll, I'll slow down food and clothing distribution as the work of a nurse in the book of RC, RC 254.6. Yes, RC reflecting Christ, 254 paragraph six. Food and clothing distribution. How do we achieve this? We achieve this when we have the hygienic dress making machines. When we know how to sew, we know how to do our crocheting work and food distribution through what we grow. You will find it easy to distribute food if you grow more of them. Is it true? Yeah. So uh, now this takes us to uh, the garden missionary work in connection with our sanitarium. Now, this is now where the success of sanitarium work lies. Because without this, we can achieve nothing. Without farms, we can achieve nothing. We meet conditions, people who are sick in this world, that a food that is bought from the grocery cannot cure. Mm. A carrot that has stayed for two or three days cannot cure a stage three or stage four cancer. A broccoli, though very powerful, that has stayed or been sprayed and frozen for five days cannot cure a grade three cancer. So you mean a cancer that is called HER2, H-E-R-2, stage two. Uh, uh, estrogen, non estrogen driven breast cancer. Very, it kills very, very fast, spreads like a fire in a dry grass. Very fast. Within three months, done with that fast. It has spread to the brain, it has spread to the lungs, it has spread to the liver, spread to the kidney. You cannot do that with a tomato that has been sprayed and I stayed three months or was ripped and forced to write. You do not know. You cannot. That is why, by the way, 60% um, of your healing in a sanitarium of any sick person depends on the food you eat. The juices, the raw vegetables, Raw, uh, or, or, or how do you call it? Mm, fruits. I have tried this uh, uh, physically by myself. Spirit of prophecy says that in a sanitarium, there needs to be uh, farms, and in those farms, we need to grow fruits. And fruits that are taken just from a plucking and then it and immediately works more powerful, more powerfully than those that have stayed in a grocery for a long time. Jethro Crow says that within seven minutes, if the fruit is taken in, you've taken it with the whole vital force. Try one day, I tried a lemon that is grown and just cut it and squeeze it in water and drank it. It was so strong. I tried it with my grandmother who was having a cataract. She applied it for about one week and she said, now I can see someone who is very far. She could not see someone who is coming from very far. And you just go buy a, a lemon that stayed there, you try to squeeze it. The, the test is not the same. The potency is not the same. We want to have Sanitariums where if they are not going to use, let's say a lettuce or a, or a carrot or a beetroot or onion, I take it from the farm. Within five minutes, it is processed and taken in. The person will be restored. Why? Because the vital forces, uh, the, the, the potency is intact. 
we handle cases that are very tough to treat today because we have not been farmers. You are a medical missionary without a leg. How much can you go? If danger comes, danger, no leg, you rise when you don't have leg. Well, how far will you go? No. You fall down, yeah. right? With your head, you fall down. You can move no far. That is why we want to make sure that all that are going to establish this wall, the farms and the gardens are well equipped. Uh, now, this is the uh, the crux of the matter. <clears throat> and uh, I want to read us uh, something here. Let me see if I'll get it. Uh, this is CH 223.2. This is how serious this one is. CH 223.2. CH 203.2. The title is Sanitariums in Connection with Garden Missionary Work. CH 223 paragraph two. It says, it was his design that instead of rebuilding the one large sanitarium, our people should make plants in several places. These smaller sanitariums should have been established where land could be secured for agricultural purposes. It is God's plan that agriculture shall be connected with the work of our sanitariums and schools. Our youth need the education to begin from this line of work. Have you taken the point? That it was divine principle or divine plan of God that our sanitariums, number one, we need to have uh, decentralized sanitariums in different places. They may be homes, they may be facilities, connected with the garden or agricultural work. In that agricultural work, that place, the work that is being done, there is teaching people on, on how to grow food of different types. And a garden missionary should know, should also be a medical missionary. He understand disease, its causes, prevention, and cure. And so you are not just going to grow one type of of plant or crop in the garden. Like let's say, garden, how many are garden missionaries? Don't fear, I'm, I'm just going to make it easy for you. Now, you have someone who is having a problem with the respiratory system. Which foods or which crops can I get from your farm that are going to help me to handle the patient? Yes. Onions, Onions yes. So the garden missionary must understand that onions need to be in the farm. What else? Yes. Garlic. Garlic needs to be planted. What else? Ginger. What else? Cayenne pepper. What else? Lemon. What else? Onion. What else? Hmm? Oranges. What else? Of this respiratory system. No, no, no. I don't pick them. Which one will you pick? Someone is coughing, is having asthma, it is difficult for him to breathe. Which plant will you, uh, which crop will, will I get from your farm to, to help that person? Pineapple. Yes, pineapple. Thank you for that. Pineapple helps those who are having respiratory system mixed with the turmeric and some oranges. It breaks a cough that is, uh, that is, does not produce um, a catarrhal cough, you know it? A dry cough mm -hmm. or that which has mucus. It breaks that mucus buildup and then the person can cough it out. And if you want to make it so powerful, you melt the juice and then warm it for three minutes and then mix your turmeric and then your orange and a lemon. And if you have your lemon, if you want to make it more potent, you roast it and then you squeeze out the juice. Then you put your turmeric and ginger and some, uh, you can choose to add some teaspoon of salt. 
and give that person, it will be able to break out the mucus that is built up in the, uh, in the system. Now, uh, the data we have with the most of pineapples today is that they are sprayed. If you have a pineapple that has grown naturally in an organic, an organic uh, soil, it will be more powerful. Even the test will be very powerful. Nowadays, the foods that are being grown are not having tests. It is gone out the long, long time when we used to come from school and uh, a neighbor who is cooking uh, uh, ugali in a neighborhood two meters away, the smell of that ugali can be smelled as far mm -hmm. as you are. Nowadays, it is even in the house, you cannot detect that ugali is being cooked. Now, yeah, gone are the days that you are passing near a, a banana plantation and you can hear, you can smell a ripened banana because the soils have lost their what? Their productivity. And, 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 and because of sin, adding more on the sin of Cain. You know that when, when Cain sinned, the soil was cast and it could not produce according to its strength. Look at Genesis chapter 4, verses 12. And, and we are called to restore such a, such a, a, a lack in our life today. In, in Genesis chapter 4 and verses 12, it says, when thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. So because of sin, the strength, the fertility, the potency of the soil to make things grow, reduced. But God promised Noah something. Do you know that? And the children of Israel something. That since the, Cain, the, the sin of Cain that grew, and you go to Genesis chapter 6, verses 5, you see sin was piled up in the whole world, and then God had to destroy it. God has to destroy everything. Then God made a covenant with Noah. And when God made a covenant with Noah, he promised him that he is going to restore to some extent, not in completion, because Christ is the one that now comes to restore all that were destroyed. And uh, when, when Noah is... Uh, is come from the from the flood. The Lord blesses him and restores a covenant with him again, and uh, Noah becomes a husbandman. He keeps the animals and grows a vineyard. And God promises that since uh, as I live, seed time and sowing time will no longer cease. That is Genesis chapter 8, verses 22. It says, while the earth remaineth seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. So God brings, restores again uh, his uh, promise to, to mankind because he has said in Genesis chapter 3, verses 17, that all the days of your life, you shall do what? You shall eat from what? Where was man to eat from? From the big supermarket, right? From the garden, right? <laughs> all the days of your life, you shall eat from the garden. It means man was to get his food from the garden. So this is the principle that garden missionaries must understand. And the garden must be 
able to yield its strength as God allows. So we must understand one of the responsibility of a garden missionary is to make sure that God instructs him or he follows the instruction of God on how to grow his food. Number one, he must have seeds. What did Noah have for him to begin planting? Did Noah carry seeds with him into the earth? Yeah. Yes. He carried all the seeds that were needed for man in the earth. I tell you, if they were not carried, they would have been buried 90 miles below. How long will they sprout to come out from the ground? Almost nil, right? So God wanted to preserve seeds. One of our work in these last days is seed, preserve, uh, seed preservation. You know, the devil is working very hard to make sure that the seeds are lost. He's trying to do the amalgamation. However good it may be in fighting food insecurity, but it has gone away from the divine plan of God. The cassavas are going, are, are no longer there, or they, they, they are being here in Kenya, the original cassavas are not found. Potatoes are being, they are colonizing or making colon. Do you know a colon? Do you know a colon in, in planting? No. You make something that is a kind to a certain plant by taking a gene from the other side, taking a gene, taking a gene from, from, uh, from the swine, putting with some part of the tomato and then let it grow. If I want to have a big tomato, which is nowadays being done, I go take, because the pigs grow very fast, very, very fast. A pig of three months, can it be ready to be eaten? Yes. Very fast. So I go and study, you, you, you remove the gene, you, you study the genes of, of a swine. Which one, why is it growing this rapid? Then I pick that gene. Then I come to a tomato. Why does it remove very small, small what, small size fruit? I remove that and fix that one with this one. On. And then I produce it. There I have what? Most of the uh, cloning is done with the genes of, uh, of a swine. So swine is everywhere. God says in Isaiah 66, 66, 17, never eat swine. But the devil says, all right, the people are very clever. They don't want to eat swine. I will let them eat swine ignorantly without knowing. Now, what I'm going to do is to put swine in everything. Most of the things today, from clothes to even vehicles, to even window panes, and to even the food that we eat, you will find some portion of swine in it. <laughs> to colgate, this thing for brushing, to handbags, to phones, you find a portion of, of swine in it. They use parts of the swine to produce some of the, of the stuff. And also in agriculture today, a lot, a lot, a lot has been that is, that is why there is a call for garden missionaries who understand that seed preservation is needful. To me, this is it. If we miss it, then we are, going, we are not going to succeed with the sicknesses we have today. Many people are sick because they are doing the genetic makeup, the genome has been changed because of the food they eat. You eat a tomato that has been, uh, that has been, uh, it's a clone made from, uh, from, from a pig. Your DNA will be built up from a pig gene. And when you develop disease and you continue feeding 
treating your patient with those food stuff, how much do you achieve? Nothing. Nothing. This is where we are actually lacking knowledge. And by the mercy of God, some may get well. It is uh, most of the uh, of the genetically modified tomatoes are having that. Like uh, there was one they brought up called Calje. I don't know whether you know it. It used to be it goes very rapidly nowadays. I don't I don't find it uh, because in Kenya they banned the genetically modified foods, but uh, they have re we introduced it again. So we expect them next year, May twenty first. Uh, we are having our first uh, batch of genetically engineered maize to the farmers, provided to the farmers. And what it does that it kills or it destroys those indigenous foods because people will be, people want to see this producing and because people want needs to fulfill, they'll go for it. At the same time, those original seeds are being faced off. That is what is happening. You can walk in a whole village and fail to get those original maize seeds. Where do we find yellow maize today? Or red or purple? Or blue maize? Do we find them today? And do you know that they are very powerful than this and the hybridized seeds that we have to. This is why we are paying when we get sorghum. Sorghum has been, they, 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 so far they have one brand that has come out. The devil says that I am going to, I'm going to make sure that I mix out things. It began with wheat and vine so that men can be drunk and men can actually uh, find themselves in the trap of a devil by just interfering with the ecology, ecological system that God has. We need guardian missionaries. Even if you're not called to this line, you may not be interested or having that know-how, but I tell you, at least do something plant something and planting you don't need a big farm you need to begin with the porches then like if you was telling my wife i want to begin producing onions spring onion i will not be buying onions all the time so i made some porches and plant the spring onions if you have that circumference of uh, over 20 liter jerry can uh, pail you can grow, if you have three of them, you have enough spring onions to feed a family of three. Just simple like that. I'm not going to wait to let these seeds go like that. If you get a seed of a tomato that is indigenous, you don't need to get a big farm, just a porch and plant it there and preserve that seed. Irish potato has been genetically engineering hybridized, you know that? We don't have that original one that was staying for a long time and very firm. It is no longer there. You find it, it is hard to find. So the devil wants to feed the system with this that grow very fast in the name of food insecurity. But you know, God had its children in the ocean. They were using his natural way of planting, but how many, how many ran angry or went angry? Not. In fact, with that system, seven years, the whole world was fed. Do you know that? You know, the whole world was fed during the famine that struck, uh, stricken the Egyptians, the whole world. Mm -hmm. The Egyptians were the source of food because Joseph was there. People will come from Canaan. And what do you think that the, the Ishmaelites uh, were, were doing when they were training, taking Joseph to Egypt? What were they going to, to, to take from there? They were going to take food. They were taking the spices from that Gilead and then uh, 
the, 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 the Egyptian give them food. Food for full want of food and raiment. The devil says that he will have the whole world under his control. And we need to have the right food, <laughs> the right seeds, seed preservation. In Uganda, if you have those uh, uh, those local and indigenous uh, sweet potatoes, cassavas, eggplants, keep them, preserve them. Just grow them, even if it is just one for seed preservation. That is what I do. If I get one, I just, if it, even if it's one, just plant it just to preserve that seed because we are in danger. That is the work of garden missionaries today. Making sure that the seeds are preserved, just like Noah preserved the seeds when he was in the ark. We are building the ark. The ark that we are building, we are building the ark that is wrapped with the righteousness of Jesus Christ, righteousness by faith, doing the sanitarium work, doing the garden missionary work, home missionary work, hygienic restaurant, kitchen ministry, garden missionary work. The world needs to, to know this. The world needs to know this. So in Ministry of Healing, just in closing, in Ministry of Healing, page 193, in Ministry of Healing, page 193, It says that 193 paragraph two says Christian farmers 193 of Ministry of Healing point two Christian farmers can do real missionary work. Real what? Missionary work. Is they are frequent? Yeah, crusades are good. Evangelism for two two weeks are good but they are good. By the way, these are the breaking ground, the sanitarium work, the publishing work, the food factories, where they are, they, they, they are the frontliners. And then in those areas, we organize evangelistic meetings. We'll have a lot of success, true or false. But if we begin with the, uh, the, 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 the right hand is not there, the leg is not there, the body is helpless. Success, the prophecy do not do evangelistic campaigns that we do open air, but they work, they achieve more than we do because they understood the, the, print, the blueprint, only that it brings glory to man, it does not bring glory to God. So the people of the, the Lord will be very wise to begin doing this work we are doing. Yeah, so Christian farmers can do real missionary work in helping the poor to find homes on the land and in teaching them how to till the soil and make it productive. There is teaching to make sure how that the soil is done what is made productive. That is your work as a guided missionary. In the sanitarium where uh, we have sick people, food needs to be produced there, the sanitarium or the hygienic restaurant or a home should not continually buy food from outside. You need to be able to produce productive milk, however simple it may be. Begin with what you have. Begin from growing from pears or, or sacks and to a little small place. You know you can grow tomato in a sack? Yeah. If you have this, say, I just want to have five of them, and it is easy to control pace in such a manner than when you put it in an open field. Just simply like that. And you produce your food, and you are able to feed your family. As a father, that is your first responsibility, making sure that you provide good food to your children. Teach them how to use the implements of agriculture. Some people do not know even how to hold a jembe or a seed is degraded. Are you sure that some people do not know how to hold a jembe? 
Have you ever met someone who not know how to hold a jembe? Yeah. <laughs> yeah in, in the time we were in school, and uh, there's a friend of mine who was digging a jembe, and he almost dig his leg. <laughs> and you know, should I holding a jembe like this? You see that that hand is this side, and holding a jembe like this. <laughs> Some people do not know how to hold <laughs> the implements of the garden. And a crisis is coming. Where will they eat from? If the supermarket will not be able to supply food unless you have the mark of the beast. Many people have loved preaching ministry. They say that preachers are those who are in suits and they have big Bibles <laughs> and shine shoes and then they go out we are finishing the word. That is a, a kind, and you, you're preaching that Trump is the last president of the United States of America. <laughs> There's no buying and selling. <laughs> I tell you, we, <laughs> we have been misled. How did Paul win his convert? And that's why the young people who see such a minister, they see they see ministry as something that, oh, if you're a minister, you will escape a lot of manual labor. Yeah, you just want to be in a suit and a suit and change a suit. I have a minister who was going for a mission for 14, uh, for, for two weeks and carried 14 pairs of, of, of suits. <laughs> Every day is a classy suit. Tell him to go for visitation, cannot go for visitation. Just one, bring some, some food, some, some juice, and, and just study. Time is finished. <laughs> Blessed are they that my Lord finds so doing. And, and, and most of the work that God wants want to find us so doing is a preparatory work. These institutions are very important for us. Yeah, so you need to teach people how to cultivate various crops and how to plant and care for orchards. So in that one quote, it contains all things that we're supposed to do. Our work is training people, always training people. This work, if you are doing, even if you go to a village uh, in a foreign country, no one can understand. Because those people find you working. You are not trying to, uh, you're not trying to, 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 to steal maybe children from other people just to, uh, to addict them with some drugs. You are teaching them to be useful people in the society. And this is the work that God wants us to do. Garden missionaries who will be able to save the world on the crisis that is coming. In our sanitarium, we'll need food. Our homes will have food and good food that is going to restore the system. The world is sick. Most diseases are as a result of malnutrition because the soil, the man, when man was created, he was taken from the soil having 92 traces of minerals. But nowadays, because of the NPK and the CN and the DAP, we have at least more than four minerals, major minerals in the soil. And the others have been depleted. And so your body will just be having a lot of potassium that is not balanced with maybe boron that keep it, keep it in check. Zinc that makes your, your zinc and cobalt that make your, uh, your, your calcium and magnesium to be, to be taken into the, into the cells and that tissues and your bones. So the world is suffering most of the diseases are a result of malnutrition. No nu nutrients built up in the system are being depleted. So there's a need of gardening. Without gardening, we are going to achieve nothing as medical missionaries. We need to be finding solutions as quick, as quickly as possible. May God bless us as we think about all this uh, solemn work and noble work. As you go to your home, Make sure that there is a garden, however small it is. The hygienic restaurant where you're going to work, think about that. Teach your people to have that. In the sanitary where you're working, make sure that that demonstration is manifested.
to your people. And God will bless them. And even if Jesus Christ come to jail, they say you are farming and an angry man and just you just you you, you had just uh, plucked some uh, onions and some and some cabbage or green vegetables to uh, someone who is lacking food and then a sleep cuts you off and then all of a sudden you hear the trump of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Where will you you'll be just awakened there? This is our Lord we waited for so long. Or you are helping a sick person, Jesus Christ can find you helping a sick person, you are sure of heaven. This is the work that God wants us to do intelligently and soberly, intellectually, knowing that we are doing the right work. May God bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. We can pray. Our most gracious Father in heaven, we thank you because you want to save us and you've made it easy for us to be saved. It is only us that have been uh, blinded by the devil not to understand that it is this simple. We pray for faith, we pray for strength, we pray for wisdom, and may your presence be with us. In Jesus' name I pray with you. Amen.